What a game here tonight down in St. George's Grenada and the U.S. take down Mexico in their fifth all-time meeting at the CONCACAF U-17 Women's Championship. If you missed any of it, here's our game recap. And uh, we start with the U.S. in the first half and the first goal of the game. Well, Ashley Sanchez taking advantage of an opportunity here, not against the run of play per se, but Mexico, that defensive mistake, and Sanchez wastes no time capitalizing. But look at this play, started on the right flank, passed all the way around by Hernandez, and then a beautiful finish, a touch and a finish, right side netting by Ovalle. 86 minute, and that's when the heroics of Savannah Coleman come through. And just completely caught sleeping there. Goalkeeper stays on her line. The back line, it was almost like they looked at each other. They thought Aguirre was coming off. They thought they were marking up, and nonetheless, the U.S. finishes a solid game. And the uh, Colorado Rush player from out there in Littleton, Colorado, I bet the party's going on back there in the Rocky Mountains. You look at the U.S.'s domination in this tournament. Three times now champions, and the other two times they've been right there, but coming away as the third-place winners in both 2010 and 2013. So we have had seven of the 16 spots filled for the uh, World Cup coming up later on this year in Jordan. And you see uh, all three of the CONCACAF spots, Mexico, USA, and Canada, Canada, by virtue of a third place win earlier today down in Grenada against Haiti. But still, Economy Bowl to fill out their two spots. And uh, the Asian Federation to fill, or African Federation, excuse me, to fill out their spots. Earlier today, as I mentioned, I'll we'll take you through the highlights in this one. We pick it up in the 55th minute of play. Well, and again, Canada, a little bit of redemption, I think. They got beat by Haiti in that group stage, the final game of that group. They came out firing on all cylinders. No chance for the keeper to make the save on that one as Vital Katz puts that one away. Haiti would add a couple of consolation goals as the game would uh, finish 4-2 on a win there for Canada. Certainly, uh, Bev Priestman happy with the opportunity to take her team to the U-17 World Cup in Jordan later. Uh, and there you see the all-time winners now as we have gone through five editions of this CONCACAF U-17 Women's Championship. The U.S. now three-time winners. Mexico, who were the reigning champions coming in, making it all the way back here to the final and obviously, importantly, getting their spot in the upcoming World Cup. But uh, the U.S. able to reclaim the prize, per se, as Savannah Coleman with an 86-minute winner. And I think you have to also give credit to Sophia Smith. She came in and immediately helped create some chances for the U.S., including what ended up being the game winner. Well, and it wasn't an easy easy path for her to get to the end line to make that cross, and she didn't even get all the way to the end line, but she held off a defender, shielding the ball, using her body, not letting it go out of bounds, keeping the strength and her positioning, takes a look up, sees a big space in there. There was actually three defenders and the goalkeeper and Savannah Coleman and she made a beautiful run in behind to finish and that's kind of what she's been doing the whole tournament nobody on this U.S. team we has ever given up on a US. run Ashley Sanchez Ashley this victory what does it signify for you um it signifies two years of hard work I mean Mexico gave us a a great game but we came but everything we had we just gave and it ended up working out in the end what is going to the World Cup, going through this process, mean for your team, for all the hard work you put in? Um, it means everything. I mean, everyone has sacrificed a lot to be here. And going to camps, being away from our family and our friends, everything's just working out, and it's amazing. Congrats, Ashley. Thank you. That's, that's Ashley Sanchez. She has certainly been one of the major stars for this uh, U.S. team. And uh, I think she's definitely one of the ones to keep your eyes on to continue to filter her way upward onto the senior national team. But what about the goal scorer, the game-winning goal scorer? Savannah Coleman making her way to the microphone for some post-game remarks as well. We're with number 14 from Team USA, Savannah Coleman. Savannah, another beautiful goal scored at the end of the match. Tell us your thoughts on how your team played. My team played great. We fought the whole time, and I thought that's why the goal was so rewarding because of my teammates and how hard they fought, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without them, and they really made it special today. Was the thought of penalty kicks crossing through your mind when you tried that, that shot? Um, no, not at all. <laughs> Anything that surprised you guys from Mexico? Um, no, it wasn't surprising at all. Mexico put up a great fight, and that's what we were expecting from them. What does it feel to be crowned as champions? It feels amazing. So much hard work has been put into this and so much preparation, and it's all paid off right now. Thank you so much, Savannah. Thank you so much. 
And we turn our attention back to the field as uh, the awards presentation about to get underway. The CONCACAF dignitaries and representatives from both teams making their way out onto the stage. By the way, Savannah Coleman opened the scoring against Jamaica in the 16th minute with the first goal of the tournament for the U.S. And she caps the scoring in the 85th minute tonight here against Mexico with her fourth goal of the competition. All three of the uh, goals set out by B.J. Snow accomplished here in this two-week period down here in St. George's Grenada, Ladies winning the group, advancing to the World the Cup with their semifinal win against Canada, and now the third and final part of it, a chance to get their hands on the CONCACAF Under-17 trophy. Mexico. Here is uh, Montserrat Hernandez making her way up onto the stage. Two goals in the tournament for Hernandez. Including one in the semifinal win against Haiti. She also scored in their opening game of Group B play against Costa Rica, a 4-2 win. Golden Glove winner from the U.S., Laurel Ivory, the young goalkeeper from Surfside, Florida. Conceded just two goals in the competition through the five matches. Now time for the Golden Boot. Seven goals in the competition for number 10 from Haiti, Marilia Mondesir. Oh, and Haiti losing in that third place match today, but wow, what progress they have made. Oh, yeah. Not just at the youth level, but the senior level. So exciting to see what they're doing with soccer in that country for women. They had an explosive win in their very first match. I think it was actually against the host Grenada, something like 12, 15, 13, 13 nothing. With that huge win against Canada in the final group stage game, and, and she was a huge part of it the entire time. And so now Ashley Sanchez is the, uh, the golden boot there for Mondesir, and now the golden ball, excuse me, for Ashley Sanchez. Five goals in the tournament, including the game winner against Mexico a week ago. And she got the first on the night for the U.S. here tonight. As I said, Kendra, I think she's certainly one that you will want to keep an eye on as uh, she probably continues to rise upwards in the U.S. soccer program. Well, and she made her mark already in the U-20 tournament back in December, and you can see what she's capable of, but it's hard to pick really any one player on this U.S. roster. So many bright spots in every single position. She had three goals and five assists and was part of the best 11 in the 2015 edition of the CONCACAF Under-20 Championships. And now a tip of the cap to the officials that were down here for the entire two weeks. U.S. played uh, all their group games in the Grenada National Stadium before making their way here into the Grenada Athletic Stadium for both the semifinal and the finals. And tonight's official crew, the last to come through and shake hands with some of the CONCACAF dignitaries up on stage. Third place team, Canada. So while not raising the trophy here for Bev Priestman in this Canadian under 17 team, certainly uh, the opportunity to continue on as they will be in Jordan 
It was one of the three teams to represent CONCACAF in the U-17 World Cup coming up later this year. Well, they rebounded nicely. I mean, a tough loss to the United States in that semifinal match. I don't think they were coming out expecting to lose that game 5 nothing, but rebounded nicely in that third-place match today, which they needed to win, as you said, to get to the World Cup in Jordan this fall. I think one of the things that you're seeing most, Kendra, through this tournament, at least in this fifth edition of it, is, you know, at least at the senior national team level, the U.S. were so far ahead of all the other countries in the CONCACAF region. And now you're seeing, I think we mentioned it last week when we were covering the U.S.-Mexico game, a lot of the Mexican Federation feels that now, like this under-17 group, is, is kind of a golden generation. They're expecting big things from to level the playing field. And I think you're seeing that with other CONCACAF countries as well. Well, and I think that's the key. There is some parity that's coming about in the CONCACAF in these youth age groups and even at the senior level. It's starting to be more evident the time and the energy, the money, the resources that these other countries are putting into their youth programs and really getting things on track right from the beginning, from a young age. And BJ Snow actually said it was before the tournament even started that he felt that the United States is a little bit behind some of these other countries that their teams or their their youth players play professionally, maybe not in CONCACAF, but in women's soccer in general, that their youth players play professionally at age 15 or 16, and that they feel that they're a little bit behind what the rest of the world has to offer. So we'll see come World Cup time in September. Now the U.S. will look to take it a couple of steps further from the last time that they were in the World Cup. And now Mexico, the second place runner-up finish here in the 2016 edition. Again, I think we detailed it in tonight as well as last week's broadcast. A lot of ties to U.S. players here. I mentioned some of the players that play in Southern California. I think half of the roster for Mexico playing club soccer in the States. So that team will continue to rise over the coming years. And again, Kendra, you have to think about how hard they fought here tonight. I thought when it was 1-0, the U.S. was probably going to put the finishing touches on it, but a great goal from Ovalle levels things, and they almost had a chance for another equalizer in the closing moments. Well, and they had a couple opportunities, not just the one that Ovalle hit with the post, but in general, they had a couple tremendous opportunities throughout the match. This looked like a different Mexico team than the first time around they played the United States just last week. I don't know if it was game planning. I don't know if it was confidence. I don't know if it was just that confidence knowing that they played with them the first 90. They played with the United States the first 90, only losing one nothing to a late goal to Ashley Sanchez. And they came out firing on all cylinders here tonight. We will hear more noise from Mexico for sure in the coming years. And it's, uh, although U.S. soccer fans may not love it, I think it's great to see that the rivalry continues on with next generations, especially on the women's soccer side. A pat on the back for sure for Chris Cuellar, the son of Leonardo Cuellar, who has overseen the senior Mexican women's national team for quite some time. And his son, Chris, taking a page out of that book. But your champions for the third time in the CONCACAF Under-17 Women's Championship are the United States. Not only have they booked their spot in Jordan for the World Cup later this year, but they again will get their hands and medals, I should say, on the top spot here in CONCACAF. All smiles, as you would imagine, for the red, white, and blue. You heard Ashley Sanchez say all the sacrifices that players have made, national team camps, probably being away from their friends and family, especially over these last two weeks. It is all worth it once that medal is around your neck, even probably once the final whistle in tonight's final blue, and the U.S. knew that they were the top team in the CONCACAF region at the under-17 age. Well, and they talk about the sacrifice and the time spent, and this is across the board for every every team that's in this tournament. But it's not just while they're together as a youth national team, while they're at a training camp, while they're at these tournaments. It's the time spent 
in your backyard, putzing around with the ball, doing the individual work, the time and energy that these young women put into training to be some of the best in the country, if not the world, at their age group. And every single member on this team, minus the backup goalkeeper, played in this tournament for the United States. So it is a true team group effort on the field for the matches and as we talk about during training and putting in that hard work and time and energy. BJ Snow acknowledging one of the dignitaries from the Mexican Federation, I'm sure, knowing what a fight Mexico gave the U.S. here tonight inside of Grenada Athletic Stadium down here in St. George's. And last of the players to come up onto the platform here and receive her medal is Ashley Sanchez. The young lady from Monrovia, California with five goals in the tournament. And like a couple of her other teammates, a future UCLA Bruin. but certainly most, not least, the hardware in the hands of Ashley Sanchez. Back where they belong, the U.S. women's under-17 team on top of it all in the CONCACAF region. They are your 2016 CONCACAF under-17 women's champions. It all comes to a head here, Kendra, with the raising of that trophy, a goal that they have worked so long and hard, especially after the disappointment of the 2013 semifinal. I can only imagine how good it feels. Well, and just the fact that they're redeeming, redeeming themselves a little bit. I mean, the fact that they have never allowed more than one goal in a single game throughout any of these tournaments during regulation, and they come back with a championship this year. I mean, just a huge relief for all the hard work they've put in. As the ticker tape falls from the skies here in Grenada, if you missed it, let's go back into our game recap.